Well, that coat could blind a man, Clive. A mounted policeman's always on parade. That's great. Here we are in the middle of nowhere, and if your little queen showed up, you'd be ready. Well, ain't that splendid? Being, uh, properly turned out reflects an attitude. Proper state of mind. This isn't just a job for us. We represent the crown. The rule of law over violence. Values that have made Western civilization great. Besides, Assistant Superintendent Taylor is inspecting my post. Oh, oh. Ohio. Oh, Corporal Clyde Bennett, Northwest Mounted Police. Why were those men chasing you? What men? What's the matter with you? Who are you? Does anything besides your head hurt? No. What's your name? He doesn't know his name. Let me talk with him. Oh, yes, Superintendent Taylor is here. He's here? Already? Yes, I met him outside your office. I guess you already heard. What about the two guys you were chasing? I lost them. Good work, Jack. It happens once every decade or so. Oh, no. Now what? My mustache. You ain't got a mustache. That's the point, Jack. And in case you ain't noticed, you ain't got no beard, neither. You want to take a walk? A long walk? All right. No problem. Anything you say, Clyde. Um, 
Corporal Bennett's ready for inspection there. Uh, what, what is that, General? <laughs> and you must be Marshal Craddock. Hmm? That's right. Fascinating. I regret I wasn't here to receive you. At ease, Corporal Bennett, at ease. On patrol, were you, Corporal? Yes, sir. I happened on a man. He was a visitor from Germany. He was being chased by... First, I want to see your patrol report forms. Yes, sir. When the marshal was trailing you, are you sure he didn't get a good look at you and Farrell? Nah, he never saw our faces. I tell you, Vance, we got away clean. You boys behave yourselves. We're gonna play this nice and easy. I knew he couldn't be trusted. You better have that map. Well, you're in good spirits today. There's a fellow German in town. I invited him for a beer later. Maybe we can share some memories. Uh, I'll be right back. Don't these things look familiar to you? They should. We took him off your horse. I don't recognize any of this. He's telling the truth, Jack. He has a condition called amnesia. He has what? Amnesia. A condition whereby the patient suffers a loss of memory, due usually to brain injury, Shock, fatigue, or illness. The only cure is time and rest. Picture of your parents, Corporal? Yes, sir. Well, everything seems correct, Corporal Bennett. Except you have no moustache. I did have one when I first came here, sir. A moustache, neatly trimmed, of course, lends an air of authority and maturity to a young man's face. Yes, sir. Grow one, Corporal. Yes, sir. Why do you find it necessary to share an office with this pack rat? There were no funds available for me to purchase or to build my own outpost, sir. I appreciate that, Corporal. But surely you would have been better off sharing space with a... a barber or a butcher or a... Gents? Anyone want some coffee? You know, I found some interesting things in that there German saddlebags. Looks to me like he's a surveyor or a map maker, something like that. Bet you didn't know that, did you? You going deaf or something? Is he referring to the German citizen brought in this morning, Corporal? Yes, sir. And why is this American interfering in the investigation of an incident that occurred in Canada? Well, sir... Interfering? Now, you just hold on a second there, General. Whatever. Assistant Superintendent Taylor! Whatever! Look, if it weren't for my help, this... Craddock! Corporal Bennett, I want a written report on why this American sheriff... U.S. Marshal. This American Marshal is illegally participating in Canadian law enforcement. Is that completely clear? Yes, sir. Thanks, Jack. You just wiped out my career in the Mounties. Yeah, well, any career that makes you wear a funny hat like that ain't worth it now, is it? Hans. Fritz. 
If I could at least remember my name. <sighs> you had a big shock. Just try and rest. Hmm? You're very kind. Thank you. Um, I found this in the lining of the man's jacket. Look, it marks a place in Montana near Bronos Ferry. And he signed the map. His name is Carl Kohlmeyer. Bronos Ferry? My memory serves me right. There was a big bank robbery there sometime last year. They caught two men, but three of them got away. Never did find the money. This is a Canadian issue, Craddock. Keep your nose out of it, will you? Canadian issue? Look, this has anything to do with that bank robbery in Montana, then it's my issue, it's my territory. I wouldn't be surprised if this map shows where they hid the money and that German was part of the gang. What is this? Sommer, was bist du eigentlich für ein Landsmann? Deutscher ohne Bier ist wie ein Pferd ohne Hafe. That language you just spoke, I heard it before. Of course, it's your language too. It's German. I come from Hamburg, where we speak the best German. Hamburg? I think I've been there. You're shaken up from your accident. It'll come back. Schweinebraten? Schnaps? I'll go get some more beer. Come on, Carl. Carl? Is that my name? Who are you? Don't play stupid. Get up those stairs. Do you mind if I, uh... No. He's gone. He was on the sleep when I left him. Either he got better real quick, or... Uh... Or they got to him first. You got it. Where is it, Carl? Take your hands off me. I don't know what you're talking about. Where's the map? We didn't rob that bank for nothing. Where's the loot? Loot bank? Listen, I don't remember anything. Ask the doctor. I've lost my memory. Here's where he hid the map. We'll look in the doctor's house. For your sake, Carl, I hope it's there. Yeah. Oh. Peters, tie him up. Ich bloß hier. Hallo. Is that uh, German fellow in here with you? German? What German? Carl. The German I brought in. Yeah, yeah. But he disappeared. I don't know what happened. We were having such a good time. Hey. Where'd you get that funny hat, Corporal? Just drop it, Otto. These men, they wanted the card. What? It's German. What happened here? Some men, they tied me up. They wanted the map. Marie found a map in your jacket. Yes, my jacket. The map. Wait a minute. Were you ever involved in a robbery in Montana by any chance? No. How do you know if you can't remember? Well, I'm starting to remember. Yeah, sure. Give him a chance, will you, Jack? I'll tell you what I do remember. These men hid something and paid me to draw a map where they buried it. I did, but then they disappeared before I could give it to them. 
When I saw their faces on a wanted poster, I realized they were the bank robbers. <sighs> the doctors. They went to the doctor's place, quick! It's not here. We searched everywhere. Well, that just leaves one place we haven't locked. Stop right there. If you don't get out, I'll burn it. This has nothing to do with you. Just hand it over. I'm going around the back. You try and reason with them. You're the smart one. I'm getting too old for this job. Might as well drop your guns. Come out with your hands up. Still interfering in Canadian affairs, Marshal. These men are one in the United States, and I've aimed to get them. We gotta get to the horses. Yeah, and how are we gonna do that? With the help of the little lady here. I'm sure our government would look favorably upon your extradition request. You do understand, don't you? Yeah, sure, I do, but they don't believe me. Where is Corporal Bennett? Doing his job, risking his life as usual. What are they doing? Both still out there. Go get the horses when I tell you. If you don't want the lady hurt, throw down your guns! Don't listen up to him! Corporal Bennett is around the other side. That's right. Good. I presume you have a spare weapon about your person somewhere, Marshal? Yes, I think so, sir. Thank you. And where did you learn to throw a punch like that? Corporal Bennett. He was champion boxer in college. Really? Mm -hmm. Permit me to offer you a cup of tea, ma'am. I believe these men now have the situation under control.
and your map will be delivered to the banking authorities in Montana so that they may recover the money that was stolen. Then I'm free to go. Not exactly. Your testimony will be required at the hearing in Fort Walsh at the end of next month. Well, I've got plans to... Like the corporal said, Fort Walsh at the end of next month, and you better be there, all right? Very well. Thank you, corporal. Auf Wiedersehen, Marshal. Now that you know who you are, Carl, we can talk about the old country, huh? Yeah, that's my idea. Corporal Bennett, I have decided to make allowances for the unusualness of this border outpost. Your written report was thorough, but it was the details supplied by Madame Dumont that clarified the situation. Thank you, Madame Dumont. However, in the future, I expect you to be vigilant in your enforcement of Canadian law without gratuitous help from Americans. You can be assured of that, sir. Madame. Sir. Thanks, Marie. <laughs> What'd you tell him? Well, uh... You know, the last time I saw a hat like this was on a monkey in the circus. <laughs> Put it down, Jack. Timed it perfectly, boss. Spoke out about a year ago means something to you? Refresh my memory. Big silver strike. Lot of money in town. You convinced the miners to invest their money in a big insurance scheme, and then you disappeared with 50 bags of silver. It's real clever. Well, if you saw how I operated there, you should see what I do in this one horse town. You could be in on it. You interested? Not here. Too public. Kill him.
government said I had to take a physical. They didn't say nothing about taking off my shirt, right? You got cold hands. What? I say you got cold hands. I'm sorry. Breathe. Again? Oh, no. What? <sighs> what? You have a heart. Yes, I do. Now, are you finished? No. All we have left to do is test your sight. Anybody know this man? Looks like Greedy. Grady Hicks. Is he a minor? Heck, Corporal. Grady Hicks never had no patience for mining. Always on the lookout for easy money. That's why we called him Greedy Hicks. Well, let's carry more to Liam's. Get a coffin built. Now, read the third line from the top. You can't read these? I see them. What did you say? I said I could see them. Then read it to me. Jack, you need to wear spectacles. Look, come here. You see them feathers sitting atop them three posts? I see that one, and that one, and that one. If you don't call that good eyesight, you tell me what is. Awful please, you've decided to settle here, Mr. Mobley. Business people, that's what this town needs to prosper. Will you leave the man to have a shave in peace? I tell you this, my friend. The railroad is going to come to this town and then watch out. Well, you've been singing that tune for a long time. My bonds will be safe, I trust. Ah, nowhere safer. This safe comes from Cincinnati. Never been fuller. All right, let's go. And next time, stay out of trouble or go to Canada, all right? Adios. The government says all forms have to be written in triplicate. Triplicate? It means three. I know what it means. You think I'm ignorant? American miner was stabbed to death this morning. You know, it always happens. Someone strikes it rich, pretty soon the whole place is swarming. Then come them vultures, them lowlifes who make a living off other people's money. I hate them. You hate them? Mm-hmm. How was your physical? How'd you know about that? I read the notice somewhere. Why don't you just mind your own business and stop reading so much? Well? Do you want to see what a man got killed or not? Yeah. See you later. Can we do it? Save is too strong. We'd never get away with it. What do we do? We'll blow it up anyway. Make them think that someone was trying to rob the bank. And they'll move the gold someplace else. Someplace easier to rob. That's the general idea. <laughs> what do you think, Marie? I'm uh, all out of me regular aftershave. Just don't tell your customers that you're using ladies' cologne. 
Leon, what are they called? Books that teach you how to read and write. Primers. They're called primers, my dear. Good. We'll need a lot of primers. Even though we're a small town, we have many who can't read. See you later, Mary. See you. Jack, I never knew that you couldn't read. I'm doing just fine as I am, all right? But you can't expect Clive or Jake to do your reading for you. Look, Bennett reads enough for ten people. Besides, there ain't nothing wrong with the way I do business, and I ain't about to change. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go do my rounds. I want to help you. Diversion? Someone's gonna find five aces in the deck tonight. Hurry up. That's a lot of dynamite. Got it off a prospector. Said it was old, so I'll have to use more of it. We don't want to blow ourselves up. Judging by the looks of him, he ain't gonna be bothering you no more. This here Mr. Moberly, he risked his life to save your gold, now just pipe down. I only did what any honest citizen would do. But what do, you, what do you plan to do with it, Marshal? You know, you're beginning to aggravate me. It'll be locked up tight in jail till Mr. McWhorter returns. Well, folks, anyone wishing to shave or a tooth pulled is out of luck. For the moment. Our gold ought to be safe in jail. Good morning. Good morning. I need a new hat. I lost mine in the commotion last night. Oh. <laughs> You got one my size? Of course. And half price for the man who prevented a robbery. Oh. You know, um, I couldn't help overhearing when I was in here yesterday about your need for primers. As it happens, I 
I'm a book salesman. Oh, oh. perfect. Oh. <laughs> and as you are being so generous, allow me to return the favor. I can order your books at half price for, oh, considering the needs of your population, $200. Oh, that's $190 more than we have, Mr. Mobley. Well, why not start a fundraising drive? Raise the money that way. You mean uh, like a bake sale? Uh, well, let me think it over. I have a few ideas in mind. <laughs> Squeeze it in! <coughs> right. Yeah. And I believe we should help the good ladies of this town raise funds for this very worthwhile cause. Yeah. I suggest something a little more sporting than a big sale. Yeah. How about a horse race? Yeah, not, a not a bad idea. A tame, old hat. Born, really. You know, there's nothing that stirs the blood like a good bout of boxing. Yeah. 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 What about it there, Marshal? What about what? He's the best fighter with or without his guns in this whole town. Let's yeah. raise funds for a good cause there, Marshal. The lady doctor's idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Bring a little civilization to this town. <laughs> civilization? <laughs> ha! A boxing match between you and who do you want to fight, Marshal? Hey, Corporal Bennett, how about it? Haven't you two got a few things to settle anyway? Yeah, the Mountie'd be good. I'll fight the Mountie for your good cause. Anytime, anywhere, but not in my saloon. <laughs> the Mountie versus the Marshal. The United States versus Canada. An international grudge match to settle old scores. And to end your literacy in border town. Yeah! No, I was boxing champ two years running at Upper Canada College. Really? Yeah, well, I learned my fight in warding off Indians and Mexicans in the Brazos. Boys, you can't be serious about this fight. Don't worry about it, Marie. I'm not going to kill him. That's not the point. Marie? Clive, I thought at least you would know better. Meaning I'm too ignorant, is that it? Look, this is for you and your darn books, you know. And don't worry, Marie. The fight's gonna be on Canadian soil. People are gonna have to check their guns on the way in. That's not the point. This isn't how I want those books. Everyone in town fights. All I ever do is sob cuts. And now, you two are going to do it to each other, all right. But don't think I'm going to be there to fix you up. Here are the rules. No gouging, no biting, no... Excuse me. The Marcus of Queensbury rules state that no fighting while clenching and no hitting below the belt. Yeah, that too. And may the best man win. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on.
boxing is this? It's not part of the rules. There ain't no rules, Marley. There ain't no rules! Mulberg. Don't move, old timer. Anything else, Miss Dumont? No, thank you, Clara. How come you're not at the fight? <laughs> I see enough fights and brawls in here. I'm going home now. Tell me something. Why'd you tell that Moberly feller to shoot me? I mean, that ain't no way for an educated person to act, now, is it? Besides, he might have taken you at your word. I was counting on him figuring that I didn't care one way or the other. After all, we'd just been fighting. Yeah, well, ain't that great. What are you writing there, anyhow? I'm writing a report on the incident. Look. I'm sorry about what I said. Yeah, well, forget it. Besides, the truth is, I can't read it. Jack. Yeah? Well, if you need some help or something. Yeah, sure. Jack, I'm waiting. Right, right. I was worried you wouldn't come. Nothing keep me away, Murray. Oh, my need that. Jake? She's teaching him to read and write. Private lessons. I don't want history to know just your side of the story. And for the record, that fight we had, we hadn't been so rudely interrupted, I would have won. What? You didn't even fight by the rules!
Captain. Now, gentlemen, I'll go around and finish them off. Nearest town. Border town. About six miles southeast, sir. Ask why she's headed with Driscoll. We'll kill him now. Sergeant James Driscoll. He was in charge of recruit training when I went through Fort Walsh in 78. I had respected by everyone. He should have been promoted right to the top. Except that some thought he had a slight flaw. He was considered overly sympathetic towards the Indians. Is that what that squad's doing out front? Is she one of his flaws? Any idea who did this to your hero? He's choking. Move the table against the wall, quickly! It's all right. <coughs> You're in border town, and I'm trying to clean that wound. Don't waste your time, man. Sergeant Driscoll. Uh -uh. What you got such a sour look on your face for, man? You seen men die before? Ah, uh, so I see you're a corporal now, Clive. <laughs> now, honey, where's now, honey? She's right outside, sir. Huh? Jake, will you ask her to come in, please? <coughs> Who shot you, Sergeant? Who are you? Craddock, U.S. Marshal. <laughs> Five U.S. Cavalry officers dressed as cowhands kidnapped Sitting Bull from one of our Canadian reservations. Now, honey and I tracked him. <coughs> there was a small battle. When it was over, two of them were dead, and the other three retreated. 
Sitting Bull returned to the reservation. Nahadi and I headed for the mountains. I thought we were going to be safe there. <sighs> Three cavalry boys found us a couple of days ago. I had this hole in my chest and... <coughs> Enough talking, you two out of here. You must save your strength and drink this. need some more ammunition. Find out where they got Driscoll. Yes, sir, Captain. See what the setup is with the marshal and the mounting. I'll be in a hotel. Yeah. Yes, sir. We gave Sitting Bull and his people sanctuary in Canada. Do you understand sanctuary? Oh, yeah, I understand it. That means Sitting Bull's hiding out there in Canada all legal-like. The point is, nothing or nobody is going to stop the government of the U.S. of A. from getting Chief Sitting Bull. And you're Sergeant Driscoll there. He interfered with their plans. Well, you can forget about him. If you think you're going to stop them cavalry boys from killing Driscoll, you're in for a rude awakening, Corporal. Believe me. It's funny, Jack. Sad, but funny. You and Driscoll, you're both the same. Bullheaded mavericks. Oh, really? And he deserves your help, Jack. I know she's in pain. But she won't let me touch her. And she hasn't said a word. It's strange seeing him here, dying. I still don't understand why they came here. He killed two U.S. cavalry officers. But they were trying to kidnap the Indian chief. Canada is sensitive to what the U.S. wants. The U.S. wants sitting bull, no matter what. The other reason Driscoll came here is Nahani. He'd have to give her up if he wanted to stay in the force. There's a rule against that? I'd have to get permission to get married. If my commanding officer said no, I'd have to give up the lady if I wanted to stay in the force. Now, honey, you should be resting. Get her upstairs, Clive. She's about to give birth. Evening, boys. <laughs> My compadre over at the stable there says a couple of you boys are riding horses that look a lot like U.S. cavalry mounts. You know anything about that? What's the problem, Marshal? The problem is the man you're gunning for is on the Canadian side. And I know you boys don't have much respect for borders, but in this town, you will abide by the law. So none of your business, Marshal. The U.S. Cavalry has the same authority as the law in this territory, and you know that, sir. Too bad you ain't wearing uniforms, because to me, you look a lot like drovers. You'll oblige me if you'll hand over them guns. Slowly. All right, Marshal, whatever you say. Like I said, hand over them guns. Slowly. U.S. military issue, just like I figured. Step back. Joe, Cody, take this fella over to the jail. You can pick up your sidearms tomorrow morning. 
before you leave town. Tonight, you break into the general store and get his guns and ammunition. Tomorrow, we kill whoever gets in our way. Oh, but, Captain. We failed to bring in Sid and Ball because of Dresco. As long as I can at least report he's dead, I can justify anything we do. I'm killing a U.S. Marshal. Anything! You're doing just fine. Just fine now, honey. Now! Push down! Now! Push! Push! Yeah, good! You've got it! That's it! You've done it! <laughs> it's a boy! It's a beautiful boy now, honey. You got it! I think you'll want to know. Sergeant Driscoll? So, still alive. Your child is born. Congratulations. How many gave birth? We have a child? Yes, just moments ago. Is it all right? From the noise it made, it sounds very healthy to me. Is it a boy or a girl? Uh, well, uh... A boy! A boy! <laughs> we have a son. <laughs> How glorious. Is the honey all right? Well, Nani is fine. <laughs> now, honey, you shouldn't be out of bed. You got my horses ready? Sure, just take me a minute. Marie? Yes? Is it bad for my son to be born under a roof and not under the sky? No, I don't believe so. Tell me, please, what Sergeant Driscoll says when he sees his son. But, Nanny, I've already told you ten times what he said. Please, tell me again. I must remember his words. I will hear his words no more. At first he said, we have a son. How glorious. Come to bail out your man, have you? How much is the fine? Well, attacking a peace officer comes cheap. That'll be two dollars. Getting the horses. I get your guns. Don't forget the guns you snuck off our horses back at the stable.
do so. An obstacle to the completion of our military mission. And you, sir, must be obliterated. Takes care of that moth eaten marshal. Jake, go see what's going on. You'll have to go back to the reservation. That's the law. Now, honey's Driscoll's wife. That makes her a Canadian citizen. You looked everywhere. You didn't find that piece of paper that says they was all married, all legal like, did you? No. But Driscoll wouldn't have lied about that. He wanted her to live here, not on some reservation. Yeah. Hey, Jake, where are you going? How are you called? Jake. Jake who brings me water? That was me. Now, honey, for a long time, I've taken. I've taken the food and the water, the gold and the silver, from this ground, this land. Your people and your people's land have been good to me. Many people died. I survived. There is plenty for all. I know. But always I've wanted to give something back. And I never knew how until now. But now I can give something to your land and your people and to you. Nahani, we must become married. I am Mrs. Sergeant Driscoll. God love you. I know. But without a piece of paper saying that you're married, Nahani, they'll take you back to the reservation. Jake already gave up his place for her and her kid. Some place. It's nothing more than a shack. It's warm and dry, woman. I nearly fell off my horse when I heard Jake was getting hitched. Oh, no, it's not like that at all. He's living in the barn now. Come on. I now pronounce you man and wife. You'll keep this safe for Nahani? Please and thank you. Of course.
Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You know, he always was like that. If he saw something that needn't do, and he up and did it without telling nobody. Well, he doesn't earn enough money to feed Nahani and the baby. So a few of us are getting together to take care of them. Well, you can count me in. I already did. Nice shave, Jack. I ain't seen him since we crossed the river, boss. I'm six heads short. Well, maybe he's looking for him. Oh, maybe he isn't. Keep pushing. It's another ten miles to border town, and I want to be there before dark. Get on. I like my money, Mr. Reeser. I want to get back before Mr. Palzer finds out I'm gone. Well. It looks like we got a problem here, Murphy. Because, uh, you didn't bring me the horse that I wanted. Are you crazy? Palisade would kill me. Mr. Risa wants a stallion. Then you can steal the horse yourself. Just give me my money. Or else I'll... Or else what? I'll tell Palsy you got his horses. Now, we had a dang deal here. Who do we have here, Mr. Drake? How are you boys, hmm? Mr. Drake, I want that horse.
Dad. Hello, Anne. Where's your mother? Buy supplies at the store. Our great news. I managed to raise more money against the horses, which means we can now afford to send you east. But, Dad, you know I don't want to go. It's all arranged. You're going to the best finishing school in Toronto. You'll meet all the right people. You leave next month. You know, next time I'm gonna have to keep you overnight. Just trying to get by, Marshal. Yeah, I know, Johnny, but you could have got real hurt out there. Well, maybe you should have left me to fight it out. You gotta stop fighting your brother's battles, or you're gonna end up like he did in prison. Or worse. Johnny, I hear you're good with horses. Why don't you try the livery stable? They may need a hand right now. Thank you. I have enough problems with my horses. I don't need a troublemaker around. Ted. Saw the herd you brought in. Good looking bunch of horses. Yeah, somebody else thinks so too. I had six stolen on the way here. Did you have your brand on them? Of course I did. But you know these Americans, they can tinker with a brand so that you'd never recognize it. I'll take a look around. One of my men went missing too, Tim Murphy. <laughs> That's your horse thief, Palliser. Don't be ridiculous, my men are hand-picked. You know, Palliser, you've been ranching in these parts for what, three, four years now? The way I see it, you ain't had no success so far and you ain't gonna. So why don't you raise something else, something that don't run so fast, like uh, pigs, maybe? I warn you, Clive, if you don't find them, I'll deal with it myself. Just because you don't like the way the man talks doesn't mean he can't raise horses. You know, if he got off his high horse for half a minute, he might have half a chance. Ted was so full of dreams when we came west. He thought we'd be rich in a couple of years. I don't know many people who are rich around here. Raising horses on his father's estate in England isn't quite the same as raising them out here. Trouble is, he's competing against men who've been ranching in the West their whole lives. He certainly knows horses, Beth. He'll make it work. Not soon enough, I don't think. He's mortgaged the ranch to the hill. Borrowed money from everyone he can. And all because he so desperately wants to see Anne well married and settled in the East. Johnny, that horrid marshal let you out. Craddock's okay. It's my fault anyway. I wish you wouldn't fight. Well. The whole town knows about my brother. Knows he went to jail because he knifed someone. It's as though they want to see if I'm the same. Well, I know you're not. And who cares what the town thinks, anyway? Well, if someone in this town doesn't give me a job, I'm going to have to leave. Oh, my father wants me to leave next month. He's already arranged it all. What are we going to do? I don't know, Anne. But when he finds out about us, he's not going to be happy. Need me hands? I'm real good with horses. Hey, kid. You want a job? Well, yes, sir. I'm Reese, sir. This is Mr. Drake. We got some horses need delivering. If you're as good as you say you are, there's $20 in it for you. Well, sure, I can do it. Meet me tomorrow afternoon at Mulberry Creek. You know where that is? Yes, sir. No questions asked. Understood. Have a good day.
drinking coffee whilst valuable livestock is stolen from under your nose it. Now just hold on there, Palliser, and sit down. What's happened, Ted? That stallion came all the way from Spain without incident. One night here and he's gone. They've stolen your stallion? It's outrageous! It's a pretty big word for so early in the morning, ain't it? Now, just deliver the rest of your horses, and I'll meet you back at your ranch. They won't get away with it this time, I can promise you that. We'll find them ourselves. I didn't say his horses were stolen by Americans, but if they were, I don't want to be stuck on the wrong side of the border waiting for a bunch of paperwork to go through. Yeah, well, by then, them horses would be long gone, wouldn't they? Exactly. So, are you coming? I guess you need my help now, after all, don't you? No, I don't need your help. I need your badge. Besides, you're not a bad tracker. Well, seen as you put it that way, Cooperate with you. If we end up on the U.S. side, it's my party. Where do you want me to take him? Straight through the valley. About 15 miles that way is Cooper's Landing. Isn't that in the U.S.? That's right. Any problem? No, sir. Good. And, uh, looky here. We got another horse for your herd. Isn't that Mr. You think you can handle that? Yes. You got ten dollars here. The rest is for when you get there. Thank you. Better take you back. Mr. Pallas would be mighty pleased to see you, I wager. Well, that isn't my brand. They're certainly my horses. I might have guessed it would be you. I, I didn't change your brand, Mr. Pallas. We found our horse thief. Mr. Pallas, wait, you, you got it all wrong. I was bringing him back to you. Don't waste your breath, boy. You're going to hang. You gotta believe me, Mr. Palliser. Two men hired me. Sure, I needed the work, but, but when I saw that stallion, I, I wasn't... That horse means everything to me, boy. Where is he? He ran off. I, I tried to get him. You're a liar. I'm gonna be a part of this, boss. I left hanging behind when I came north. Anyone else? You stole my horses, and now I'm going to hang you. I, I know where the horse is. I'll lead you to him. I hope you do for your sake.
One horse and rider leading the stallion. He came out on this side, all right. Two miles through the stream. He certainly was trying to cover his tracks. Marie, have you seen Johnny? He promised to meet me this afternoon. Perhaps he's looking for your father's stallion. Oh, that would please father, wouldn't it? Maybe then he'd hire him. And why don't you tell your father about Johnny? It would be worse if he heard it from someone else. Well, I just know what he'd say. What are his prospects? <laughs> Here comes your mother. Beth, what's wrong? One of Ted's men just rode into town. Anne, he said your father's gonna hang Johnny. He left him at Mulberry Creek. He said they were headed south. We can take the main road most of the way. Please, please, please find them. Okay. Hold up. Over my shoulder. Stallion. Looks like he found us. Think we can catch him? We can try or we could follow these tracks. What do you figure? This is Johnny's hat. The way I read it, he led some horses in here. Another group of men rode up, met him here, and they headed off in that direction, south. I said forget the horse. Follow the tracks. We've wasted enough time. I know he's near here. We'll rest for an hour. If we don't find the stallion by sunrise, you hang. Palliser, if you please, just let me explain. Frank, start a fire. I'll look after the horses. She's hurt. She's thrown a shoe. Go on without me. No. Get on. My horse can carry us both. Anne! Marie's horse has thrown a shoe. Come and take her back to the stable. Let's go. We better hope this fog doesn't get any worse if we're going to track them all night. I can't see Johnny being a horse thief. Can you? Nope. Don't make no sense. I've done some bad things, Mr. Palliser, but I ain't stole a horse. Honest. You can ask the marshal. Unfortunately, he isn't here to ask. But I ain't done nothing wrong. Reezer. Reezer, that's his name. That's the guy who hired me. He promised me twenty dollars. I got half, but look in my back pocket. In my book, you take responsibility for your actions. Still warm. Looks like they left in a hurry. No stallion? Very well.
You all right, partner? Have you gone crazy? I'm just trying to see that justice is done. I don't see any justice here. Just an innocent boy with a rope around his neck. This is your morality, not mine. We found Reeser's men waiting for your horses, just like Johnny said. Why didn't you uh, arrest him? Ain't got no proof, Palliser. Reeser didn't have him. Young Johnny here was bringing him back to you. Any news of the stunning? No. You've got a lot to be thankful for, Ted. Johnny here didn't press any charges. Makes you a free man. Thank you, boy. My name is Johnny Weller, Mr. Palliser. I thought I knew him. Now I'm not so sure. One thing I know, his life isn't going to be the same from now on. I think it would have been more merciful if we'd kept Palliser in jail.
Retaliation will come when you least suspect it. You think I did that? Who else in this whole country could be stupid enough, huh? No. Childish enough. You tell me, huh? Easy. Probably some Canadian men who want to drink liquor in public like us Americans or some Canadian women who want you to get rid of that stupid red jacket. That's who. No, it was you, and you're going to pay. Well, then again, it might have been, uh... Marshal? And uh, Mr. Lohe. McWhirter was due yesterday for a large amount of cash for me, and he didn't show up. Should I go worrying or what? I don't think so. Uh, he probably had to lay over on account of the storm a couple of nights ago, Edward. You probably ride in today, but just to be safe, why don't you sit down and tell me uh, who else knew about this shipment? It smells like chickens in here. To get back. Well, just a little farther. Oh. oh, Bruno, do you think we really can get married? Sure, of course. My mother is very practical. She says the man I marry has to have good prospects. I must have money security. Well, I think your mother likes me. Oh, she does. But, well, with my daddy being away for so long and her having to do everything on the farm herself, the truth is, Bruno, she doesn't really trust men. Norma Dell, I have good prospects. And as far as practical goes, you won't find anybody more practical than my brother Otto. Now, they'll work out some kind of arrangement. I hope you're right. Norma Dell? Yes, Bruno? Do you, uh, do you suppose maybe we could kiss? <laughs> Not until our engagement is announced proper. That's what Mother said. Oh, sure. I understand. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
Wait here. What's happened? Stay there! Positive you can recognize the face of the other hombre that robbed you? You bet. Good. Be in my office tomorrow morning. I'll have some faces for you to look at, all right? If you have any severe pain, come back immediately, regardless of the time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very kindly, ma'am. You take it slow, Wendell. Bray, Wendell. Butt out, Clive. The crime occurred on my side of the border. Canadians may be involved, Jack. You know, I think I know that face. What's his name? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be standing here now, would I? Did a fine job, Bruno. Thank you, Corporal. Some fine job. He could have been killed. You know, I wish you'd consider joining the Mounties. With my recommendation. My brother's not joining nothing. He works for me. I know I know that face. Be smart, son. Stay out of the Mounties, will you? How are things going with you and Norma Dell? Well, tomorrow's the big day. Getting married tomorrow? Oh, no. Norma Dell's mother and my brother are having their talk tomorrow about uh, what money security I can offer Norma Dell. Anyways, I got to get going, Corporal. Look, I'm telling you, the dead man's name is Floyd Trotter. You are completely wrong. The man's name is Ned Pierce. You can't see straight, it's Trotter. Murray, tell the fool it's Trotter, will you? The problem is all this man's faces look alike. Don't be afraid to hurt his feelings, Marie. Tell him that the dead man's name is Ned Pierce. There's no scar on his chest like the poster of Pierce. I knew I was right. It is Floyd Trotter. His right leg was never broken. So it can't be trotted. That leaves A.J. Dooley. Dooley? I ain't never heard tell of no Dooley. And there's a mole on the right shoulder of the dead man, just like the poster of A.J. Dooley. Right age, hair color, everything. Well, all we got to do now is find someone who knew him, knew his habits, his friends. Is this like trying to find a beetle in a haystack? Uh, that's Needle Murray. Uh, needle in a haystack, Murray. Come from good stock. No diseases, no crooks, no crazy people in our family. If Bruno wants to marry my Norma Dell, Mr. Danzinger, there are certain conditions I would insist upon. I came here to listen, Mrs. Timmons. Very well. My terms are, first, that you give Bruno a regular salary, as much as, say, $20 a month to start. Second, that you make Bruno your legal heir so that should you pass away, he would inherit the stable. And third... Save your breath, missus. My answer to one, two, and three is no. No, no. I left a nice rabbit stew to simmer on the stove if you care to join us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Finally brought you some of that money security you was always talking about, Sarah. I thought you were dead. I am. Do you remember me, Norma Dale? 
She remembers you drunk and beating me, that's all. Who are you? My name's Bruno. We're gonna get married. You go to town. You get me a fresh horse and a bottle of whiskey and you bring that doctor back. Yes, sir. You don't tell anybody I'm here, you understand? Nobody, not a word. You tell that doctor. Norma Dell done. Fell and broke her leg, you tell the doctor that. Yes, sir, I will. Kid. You bring anybody back here but that doctor. There ain't gonna be any wedding. What did you come here for, Leif? I figure I owe you. Half of this is yours, Sarah. I don't want any of your stolen money. Me and Norma Dell made a life for ourselves here. We're respectable folk. No one here knows about you. <coughs> Mama, help him! <coughs> you can do, Leif Timmons. Get out of here before that boy comes back. Just leave us alone. It's the same. You always kick me out. When I come back, even when years pass, you always forgive me. Well, you're lucky here, boys. Mama Mabel's gone and dealt herself a lady for another pair. Hey, don't go away, mad boys. Howdy, Marshal. Howdy, Mabel. Corporal. You know this man's face? Name of Dooley. Do I know A.J. Dooley? Gotta stay away from him, Marshal. He's a mean polecat. Yeah, well, he's one dead polecat now, Mabel. Hey, banker, you offering a reward? I should say we are. Five hundred dollars. The poster says that Dooley sometimes had a Canadian partner. Does that ring a bell with you? Now, how could I know if every jihad is a Canadian? Wendell, sit down and listen to this. Howdy, Wendell. Mabel, we understand that, but we'd appreciate it if you'd give it a try. Well, there was a man we called Stump Shot. He could have been from Canada. Big, hairy. Filthy, dirty-looking cuss, like a bear. Only had one eye. No, that ain't him. Can you think of anyone else? Say, there was a Canadian we called Leif. What'd he look like, Mabel? Ah, oh, dark hair, eagle nose, thin, mean mouth. Leif, um, Timmy Tom... Timmons. Leif Timmons, that was it. Let's go. Much obliged, Mabel. Wendell. Taking Norma Dello for a moonlight ride. You're going to run off and marry that girl, aren't you? I wanted to understand something. You're my apprentice. I'm teaching you everything I know. You miser. In a couple of days, I'm going to have my own money. $500. Now, I couldn't get $500 working with you in a hundred years, you tightwad. Now, Norma Dell and I are going to get married without your help. So let go of the horse. Otto, 
Where's Bruno going this time of night? Dusty says he's taking Norma Dell for a moonlight ride. Then he goes on about uh, having $500. $500? That's the reward McWhorter was offering. Norma Dell. Norma Dell Timmins. Otto, saddle up the horses. Quick. Where's the doctor? She'll be here real soon. She's, uh, she's delivering a baby. No matter. I brought you a horse and whiskey. What else you got in there, kid? Nothing. It's just my old pistol. Man needs a gun. Not in the same room with me, don't. You lift it out real careful. in there all right. I'll lay you 10 cents on the dollar that Life Timmons is in there as well. Listen, you go around back, I'll kick in the front door. Easy, Stonewall. This is Canada, and he's a Canadian citizen. We're going to do this my way. Yeah, right. If you don't mind, uh, I'm going to get some sleep. I've been up all night. Run! Run for your life! Stay here! Don't move! Lay Timmons! Lock your gun! Giving us that reward money was just the most generous thing I ever saw. All I wanted it for was us. For you, Norma Dell. Oh, dear Bruno. My mother says me and she have to leave after all that's happened. We... We have to go where no one knows us. Oh, Bruno. Bruno, I love you. Poor Bruno. He'll never forget her. You can bet on that. Yep. I think he's become a man over this. Oh, Otto told me he's going to pay Bruno a regular wage. <laughs> yeah, but how much? Jack, why don't you uh, sit down? There's something I want to talk to you about. This ought to be good. So, what is it, Corp? 
<sighs> never, never underestimate the memory of a chicken. Meet Nate until tomorrow. I figure you trust me about as much as I trust you. Makes us even. You figure Keenan's gonna show? Nope, not his style. Probably taking a bath in the best hotel in Border Town right now. But he'll be here come sunrise, just like we arranged. Ain't changed much in 20 years, has it? We gonna stand around talking like this all day, or we gonna put these guns down? you figure it's worth? 150000 Gold has gone up some since we went away. Divided three ways. That's enough to buy me a lot of silk shirts, house full of servants, and, uh... <laughs> I know exactly what I'm gonna do with that gold when I get my hands on it.
I'm sorry, Mrs. Peabody. It won't happen again. Heart attack, Marshal. Better hope he's got some next of kin. He'll be paying for another funeral, Marshal. Somebody want to help me with this man? Hey, kid, is there a doctor here? Yes, mister. She lives right over there. She? Ain't never heard no woman doctor before. You hurt? Thanks. The government of Montana Territory here it acknowledges that William Keenan, formerly of St. Louis, Missouri, has served his full sentence of 20 years in the Montana Territorial Penitentiary and is hereby free to resume life as a free citizen. Signed, et cetera, et cetera. Must have done something big to spend 20 years in the penitentiary. William Keenan. Name sounds familiar. Blackjack. That's Blackjack Keenan. Keenan's Raiders, you're right. You know him, Jake? Your pa and I faced him once. Keenan liked our horses better than his own. Must have been about 25 years ago. This is another one of your American legends, Jack? Yeah, but the bad kind. The Raiders was a wild bunch that rode with Black Jack Keenan. Can't figure why he'd be up in these parts, though. You know, Jake? It's a mighty handsome buckle, ain't it? Think uh, Otto would make that into a C? Ma'am, you have the touch of an angel. <laughs> if you take it easy for a few days, you'll soon be as fit as a violin. <laughs> fit as a fiddle is the expression, I believe, ma'am. <laughs> Don't laugh, Mr. Magro. You'll open the stitches. Well, I can't say as I've ever been fixed up better. See me tomorrow, and I'll change your bandages. Well, I may not be here tomorrow. But there's a serious uh, danger of infection. You must not leave town. I can't do that, ma'am. See, I got off a cowboy who was hoping his three queens would take the pot. <laughs> Didn't figure me for the kings. <laughs> I'll take $20 for it. Saddle and all. My brother's the one that buys the horses. Uh, I'll ask him. Come back later, no? Truth is, uh, it's an old gelding. How's about ten dollars? It's kind of funny he'd leave his saddlebags. Excuse me, I'm Corporal Bennett. I understand uh, you had a little accident. John Quincy McGraw, what can I do for you, sir? I was told you were brought in with a severe knife wound. Oh, silly accident. Like the man who shot himself in the foot. I fell on my ax. Plan on staying in border town long? Just passing through. On my way west. Enjoy your stay, Mr. McGraw. Oh, the doctor's not in. An emergency, she said. All right. I told you the doctor would fix you up. How'd you like to earn a nickel? Yes, sir. Any strangers show up at the hotel? About my age? I ain't seen no strangers, mister. Leastwise, not all ones, except you. <laughs> you little. Here. You let me know if anybody else shows up. Well, there's a dead man at the tent. He's old, but he ain't at the hotel. Here, Noah. You're 
beginning to aggravate me. Jack, let me handle this, huh? Noah, we know you. Where did you find the horse? I found it tied to a tree. <sighs> About a half a mile from Hidden Hollow. That's the truth, I swear it. Yeah, well, I certainly hope so for your sake. That's the truth, Marshal. Come on, that's the truth. But in the meantime, Chow is on the house. His name's Red Roberts. Just been released from prison, just like Keenan. Well, he wasn't robbed, not for cash, anyhow. The only thing seems to be missing is his belt and his knife. I can see that. Ain't been fired. I'll tell Liam he's out here. No question. He's dead. The uh, kid told me there was a body in here. I thought it might have been a friend of mine. Is it? I still don't have anything definite to link those two deaths. Yeah, I know. Hello, Jake. Wait a minute. Well, look at this. You still think this is a coincidence? Found this in his buckle. Piece of a map. That's right. Look, two dead men, both just out of jail. One's missing his belt, and the other one's got a little piece of a map hidden in his belt buckle. Right. Only what are they looking for? 300 pounds of gold. What are you talking about, Jake? Unsolved crimes. William Blackjack Keenan, wanted for the robbery of the Helena First National Bank. He and two others, Red Roberts and John Quincy McGraw, stole 300 pounds of gold. And it was never recovered. What was the name of that man over at Marie's? McGraw. Where else could she be? I forgot there was a lady present. I usually win this game all the time, and that's the truth. And this still hurts. Am I infected? I don't believe so. I don't suppose a refined lady like yourself plays cards, do you? No. I could teach you. 
No, that wouldn't be right. <sighs> Wait a minute. Checkers. Ah. Now, checkers ain't a gambling game. But I gotta warn you, miss. I've been playing checkers for 20 years. Never did get to be champion of the prison, though. I'm gonna turn you loose. So you can have some coffee. You can have some beans. And I know you don't know how to play, but I'll teach you. It's easy. You gotta promise me you won't try to bash me in the head or nothing, though, because if you do, I'll have to kill you. Very well. Mighty nice of you to cooperate like this, ma'am. Now, you'll see. As soon as you get the hang of this game, you'll be beating me like anything. You want red or black? Red. <laughs> Bad move. <laughs> All right. The mountains and rivers. And Keen's part of the map fits right here. Yeah, but what about the other two pieces? They could go this way, that way, any which way. And it'd take a hundred men, three, four days to cover all that territory, Clive. No, we're doing something wrong. Look, you're right. But Marie's gonna pay for it. He's not gonna let her go, and you know that. Well, we'll just have to send in Noah with Keenan's map. Our only hope is to find out where the gold is hidden. I know that! Will you shut up? And that Keenan thinking he's something special, writing his name on everything, like his belt buckle, his gun, his saddle. You know something, Jack? You may not be as stupid as you look. Well, thank you very much. Now, if I was Keenan, this is the way I'd separate the map. That's okay. You know, for once, I think you were right, Clive. I hope so. Fits Keenan, he gives us three clear areas to search. And we can handle that. I like it. Hey, no. Come on, boy. Let's go. I got a job for you. you tell how happy I am now, ma'am? I can guess. When are you going to let me go? Well, ma'am, uh, I've been giving that a lot of thought. I'm waiting until I get the gold. Then after you see the gold, if you don't change your mind about me, then I'll either kill you or I'll let you go. I haven't thought that out yet. We got left. It's the third area. You want to split up? Nope. I think we should cover the last one together. All right, let's go.
If there was a snake, he ain't there no more. Take it easy, will you? Mr. McGraw thought I had a ninja stench. Yeah, well, we all know that McGraw was a lunatic, don't we? Yeah, we're all very lucky. Because if McGraw hadn't shot his pistol, it might have been a different story. That's right. What was he shooting at anyhow, Marie? A snake I saw in the bush. A snake? Mm-hmm. There ain't no snakes in Lathrop Canyon, Marie. I know. But he didn't. Tom, Jim, you're early. Who you got on board, the president? Oh, it's bigger than that, Marshal. <laughs> Must be the new saloon girls. Get my bag. Dead yet? He a friend of yours? Who is he? Obadiah Winslow. I call him the Reaper. Last time I saw him was in Abilene. Winslow drew down on the three Hennessy boys. I bet you all three of them was full of lead before the first fella hit the ground, too. What could he want here in Bordertown? Whatever it is, for sure somebody's gonna die for it.
Never, never sneak up on me again, boy. I didn't mean... I just... What? Wanted to meet you. Why? You're famous. Is that it? Is that the one? You've never seen a gun like that before. Ivory handle. Silver-plated frame made by Jacob Hazel. Special for Colt. How do you know all about that? Marshall Craddock told me. Can I touch it? Please? What's your name, lad? Willie. It's not a toy, Willie. You know you're not supposed to be up here. Run along. Thanks, Mr. Reaper. I don't like the lad hanging around the saloon. Too many unsavory characters. State your business, Corporal. A simple request, sir. You'll oblige me by keeping yourself and your reputation on this side of the border. If you know my reputation, you know I answer to nobody. I'll hand this over to Marshal Craddock. You may retrieve it when you leave town. Before you get too cocky, Red Belly, ask yourself, where is my left hand? Is it empty? Or is it holding something that can put a hole in you? I'll have my weapon. Now, Corporal. you, cowboy. <laughs> Thought she was deaf, like some old dog. You're Obadiah Winslow, huh? Yep. Well, Obadiah, you sure don't look like much to me. I ain't finished yet. Yes, you are. I'll bet your trigger finger's all creaked up with the rheumatics. Me, I'm quick as a whip. You want to try me, old Reaper? Hold it right there! First man that moves, I'll cut him in half. You start this, Obadiah? Ask the boy. Stay out of this, Marshal. You shut your mouth! He's mine! Don't you know who this is? Yeah? And come tomorrow, folks will know me. Say goodbye, old man! No! Too quick for you, son? Sorry. Thought you was in a hurry to die. Try me again if you want. I'll wait. You! Get out of my sight! Now! Winslow! Obadiah! That was him, wasn't it? The Reaper himself. And who might you be? Oh, Marshal. Here, my card. J.J. Nelson, journalist at large, six-gun publications. The Golden West, captured for your entertainment. Perhaps you've read my definitive study of Wild Bill? No. Hickok, that is? Uh, I, I've been tracking Obadiah Winslow across three states and two territories. Well, you better catch up with him fast. He ain't staying here long. <laughs> this is respectable town. <laughs> 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 
Reaper's nothing but trouble. Why'd he pick our town? money off of my life. Ain't I supposed to be dead first? Well, not necessarily. I, I did a grand job on the Earps. I count Wyatt as a personal friend. Wyatt never was very choosy. I'll think on it. Winslow, you and me need to talk. I got nothing to say to a lawman, nothing to hear. I want you gone by tomorrow. Stage leaves at 8 in the morning. I'm a late riser. Look, I'm telling you about as polite as I know how. Do not linger here. I'm telling you plain as I know how I'm staying. I've broke no laws. Not yet, you ain't. But I don't want to have to be cleaning up innocent blood in that street. Then best you stand out of my path. And I think it'd be best for the town if I don't. <laughs> Seems to me I first heard your name in San Antonio. Stand fast, Jack Craddock of the Rangers. We was bound to cross sooner or later, you and your business, me and mine. Spin of the wheel, huh, Ten Star? I'll give you one last chance. Back off now. Back your play. <coughs> Before you get too cocky, Mr. Winslow, ask yourself what I have in my right hand. Is it empty? Or does it have something that can blow a hole in you? Now, if my colleague will kindly step aside, you can take that stroll under the stars. Jack? What? Jack? You had no authority, Corporal. Winslow was my call. I'm sorry I interfered with you catching a bullet. It's only that I prefer Winslow to stay on your side of the line. You see, if you're dead, he may get restless and cross over into Canada. Good. The sooner the better. Because my people are starting to treat him like some kind of hi-hat bigwig, and I don't like it. Americans are so easily dazzled by the aura of fame. 
I ain't seen no Canadians looking away, Corporal. Question is, why is a Reaper here? Very simple, Corporal. When a shooter comes into a town, it means one thing and one thing only. Somebody's going out in a pine box. Maybe you, old stand-up Jack Craddock. Stand fast. Really? Maybe you shot one of his friends. He don't have no friends, Corporal. How about a relative or an old aunt? Know what I think? What do you think? He ain't got the price of a ticket out of town, and he's just too proud to say so. So how's about you and me kick in a couple of pesos and help him on his way? What do you say? Sorry, stand out. Winslow's your problem. In my country, peace and harmony reign supreme. No. <laughs> Hey, ma'am, I was told I might find a doctor here. Well, you might not find a real one, but uh, I'm the next best thing. Well, I, uh, I need a refill for this. On credit, if you'll oblige me. No problem. But I shouldn't make a prescription without first examining you. My surgery is close by. Please follow me. Ooh. This used to all be part of the U.S. of A. Yes, until the mapmakers drew their line. Et voilà, another country. And they can't draw a line through the past. That stays as it was. You speak as if you were here before, monsieur. Morning, Marie. Everything all right? Couldn't be better, Corporal. Can I be of any help? I think I remember the way to my house. Merci. Ma'am? A bientôt. You gotta do something about that man. What do you mean, we? The West is changing, Obadiah. And future generations will be hungry for the legend. Mr. Nelson, I consider you in pursuit of the almighty dollar. You're so slick, you'd skin a flea and sell it new underwear. Oh, but I, uh... Don't tell me about legends. I knew them, and they all died broke. Wild Bill, Kid Ringo, Doc Holliday didn't have enough money in his pockets to bury him. Thanks for the steak, Mr. Nelson. I take the point. How much for your life story? Exclusive. Chapter and verse. Fifty dollars. Cash. Twenty-five? Don't dicker with me, Curly. I need fifty for a mighty special purchase. I have some information for you. I know why Winslow is in border town. Hey, wait a minute. He was born here, in border town. Do you suppose something's hidden here he's come back to get? Are you sure it's this one? Because the Latimer boys live there now. The Latimers? They're the gun runners. Yep. And if they're around, there's going to be shooting for sure. Now there's a sight, no mistake. The Reaper and his scythe. Who are you? A nobody. 
I, I know a count traveling man, Mr. Winslow. You'll, um, you'll forgive my intruding, but I couldn't help but come take a look. I've seen you in town. You know it, sir. And I seen you in Dodge 74. When you put Lee Clancy in the ground, 30 yards if it was an inch, headshot, pow! <laughs> Them their graves? Yeah. I'm on fall. I was born right here. And you come back to do a honor? Well, that's a noble task, Mr. Winslow. Uh, they got precious little honor out of my life. Keep in mind, Craddock, Winslow's Canadian. When he was born, this was still the U.S. He belongs to both of us. He didn't come back to fight. I come back to give him a, a little dignity. I died here alone. I ordered a pair of headstones made special. You picked the right fitting place to die, Obadiah Winslow. There ain't many left like you, Obadiah. I want me a name before it's too late. I got a name for you. I'm just trying to make my way in the world. You'll be dead before I hit the dirt. <laughs> I wouldn't insult your skills by coming against you one-on-one. -on -one. You are the best, Mr. Reaper. But can you beat five triggers? Hand over your gun. Slowly. Any wound. It wasn't a bullet. The Reaper cheated history. He had a weak heart, and he knew it would kill him. He came back to die. Did I mention I'll be taking his gun, Marshal? What? Personal effects. The Reaper and I have a contract. But no story. You can't end a legend with a heart attack. A good journalist never lets reality stand in his way. The Reaper died, gunning down five desperados in his bid to save the lives of two lawmen and a beauteous lady doctor. Perfect. The grieving survivors. Obadiah would be proud. Thank you.